Am I limited by mere biology? No. I am Vegeta. I have no limits. I was browsing reddit when I saw this question regarding how to get over a smash plateau. I wrote the guy an essay because I was bored at work and to my surprise I got a lot of positive feedback and people thanking me for the advice. So I thought, let's just make this into a video. The first step into breaking your smash plateau is realizing you haven't actually hit one yet. Many players think they need this massive change in their outlook of the game or maybe they've just peaked as an individual. Both of these thoughts are way off track. Players like MKLeo, Samsora, Tweak, they're still getting better and better. When you watch them play each other at Super Majors, they have made clear improvements since the last time they've played each other. If these players haven't peaked yet, there's no chance that you have. The concepts I go over can be applied to any competitive game. I will be using Smash Ultimate as the basis, since it is the game I follow the closest at the moment, but if you are ever struggling to improve at another game, you can always come back here to refresh your mindset. Just remember that you do not need some paradigm shift to your approach at a game to be able to reach the level that the top players are at now. You just need to follow this mindset and realize that if you don't try to rush your goals, it is very easy to improve at a game. If you really do focus on improving, you can fairly easily get to a point in the future where a person at your current skill level would stand next to no chance against you. For the sake of keeping the video fairly short, let's pretend there are 5 skills you need to win at a game of Smash. Obviously there are way more, but let's just focus on 5 for now. So the first skill will be matchup knowledge. How well do you know your opponent's characters? Do you know which angles they can approach at, which angles they can recover? Do you know how to punish all of these things? What about characters like Pac-Man? What does his fruits do? I'd have no idea. What about Kamehameha? Does he know? Yeah, well apparently he knows his apple can kill at 130, so use it against them. There's obviously way more to knowing a matchup than just these things. Knowing all the minor details about your opponent's characters such as which approaching angles they have a hard time dealing with, which angles they will come at you from, which moves your character has that can combat these angles and stuff their approaches, and there's way way more. But let's just move on to the second skill for now, ledge trapping. How often do you punish your opponent trying to get back to center stage when you've put them on the ledge? Chances are a player like Leo gets far more percent when he puts people in this situation. Why is that? You can check out my last video in which I analyzed Leo's crazy pressure when his opponent is cornered. Ask yourself if you are anywhere near as consistent as Leo is when it comes to this skill. The punish game will be our third skill. Do you always get the max amount of damage you can after winning neutral? This is not only about combos. Of course optimizing your combos is important, but let's say you win neutral and you hit a 15% combo. While Light gets the same 15% combo when he wins neutral, but he also consistently punishes your landings and he keeps momentum after that, and he gets another 15%. He literally only has to win neutral half as much as you do. Watch your own replays as well as pro players and ask yourself how can you push your advantage state better so you can punish players who want to reset to neutral. Our fourth skill will be stage control. As you may have figured out, a lot of these skills are very connected with each other. Having a good sense of stage control will help your punish game and ledge trapping as you will become more accustomed to how people act when they have no control of where they can move on the stage. So how often do you abuse or even realize what a great position you are in? How often do you give up stage control for no other reason than you are impatient? Finally, we have recovering. How often do you get gimped or take a lot of damage trying to get back to the stage? Compare this to the best players of your character. Are there any unpredictable or harder to punish nuances you can add to your play to make it harder for your opponent to abuse you? Take a look at this slight drift back from Gluto. Such a small mix up in how he recovers and dissuades Mars from pursuing him any further. A lesser warrior player may have drifted into Mars or jumped only to get it stuffed out. If your character has a bad or linear recovery, are you consciously fighting for stage control to make sure your opponent just can't hit you off stage for free, or do you chase them to the ledges only to get thrown off stage and gimped? Anyway, now that we've outlined 5 skills, let's talk about improving them. If you've ever played an RPG like WoW or MapleStory if you were a real one, then I'm sure you've experienced what it's like to just play the game when you first start. You're essentially doing whatever you want, but you still quickly get levels early on over and over if you just keep playing, right? Just like in these games, in Smash, it's pretty easy to get better just by playing over and over when you first start the game. However, this significantly gets harder once you have an understanding of the game. Just playing friendlies is no longer teaching you things because you've already learned the game to a point where you now need more specific, targeted practice to level up. And just like in an RPG, the higher level you get, the more and more of a grind it becomes to start squeezing out just a single level. And just like an RPG, you can no longer just do the same thing over and over. You gotta start actually challenging yourself. But maybe don't take it too far, because it's kinda hard to learn when you're dead. 
which seems very simple but a lot of people just trick themselves and believe that they need some massive changes or that they have peaked let's say after two days of focus practice you become just slightly better at ledge trapping and stage control you watch some leo vods and you focused on how he maintained stage control you learned a thing or two but you haven't grinded doing it yourself you've just begun to better understand the nuances of stage control and how it limits your opponent's options so after two days of rod review, you got slightly better, but this won't all of a sudden allow you to beat that one guy at your weekly that you could never beat. This is where people start to crumble. Just because your two days of improvement hasn't led to any big changes, doesn't mean you haven't actually improved or that you can't get better. Don't get discouraged here and just keep leveling up those skills. Consistency is key. Let's say you're up against someone like Naru, who has really strong stats all across the board. That two days of practice will barely change the outcome of a game like this. But if you keep up the grind and level up just a tiny bit every single day, maybe after a year, you'll still probably lose honestly, but you'll definitely have a much better shot and you will definitely be much better than a lot of the people you used to struggle against, which is great. But even then, you still need to keep refining your skills if you want to keep up that momentum. And that's about it. Thanks for watching and I hope this video helps some of you to construct a better frame for what it really means to improve. In the future, maybe I could do a video that outlines many more of the individual skills that take place in every game of Smash, as well as a bunch of different practice methods you can try out. So stick around for more.